Okay, in this little video we're going to be talking about triangle congruence properties. So, you might remember from one of the first lessons we did that congruence means the same size and shape. Okay, so in this, uh, in this video here we're going to be talking about showing that triangles are in fact the same size and shape. So, uh, congruent triangles then are two or more triangles that are the same size and shape. So I've got a little uh, picture here of a bridge and you can see on this picture there's a bunch of triangles and if you were building a bridge it would be very very important that you would get this triangle and say this one over here to be the exact same size and shape otherwise uh, the people driving across your bridge or the train or whatever uh, might have a hard time. Uh, they might fall into this river or whatever is down below if your bridge isn't built right. So uh, it's very important to make sure that your triangles are the same shape and to be able to ensure that they are. So uh, we're going to go through the different uh, properties and see how this is done. Okay. So <clears throat> the first one, uh, so these little properties are all about how to um, tell if two triangles are congruent. Okay, so the triangle congruence properties are kind of like a DNA test for triangles, right? So we have uh, two young ladies here, uh, and these two young ladies right here are um, identical twins. And how do we know they're identical twins? Well, they look identical, but uh, if we really wanted to be sure, we could do a DNA test. There's a little strand of DNA right there. And we could do a DNA test on them to make sure that they are, in fact, identical twins, because if they're identical, they would have the same DNA. It's the same idea with congruent triangles. It's like a DNA test for the triangles to see if they're identical triangles. And let's take a look at the first one now. Okay, the first one is the side, side, side triangle congruence property. <clears throat> and it says that if all three sides of a triangle are congruent to all three sides of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So over here you see we have a couple triangles and um, we're going to do this. Okay, so how would you actually write this out? Well, uh, here's one uh, way to do it in the way that I want you guys to, to do it on your assignments. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, what we're going to say is we know over here that segment AB or side AB is congruent to side DE. So we're just going to say that. We're just going to write that down. So I'm going to just say that segment a, B is congruent to segment D, E. Nothing to it. Okay. I'm also going to say that, let me get a purple pen here, that, uh, actually we'll go to green. Okay. We're going to say that A, C is congruent to D, F. And then we can also say that EF, uh, sorry, B, let's, let's do it the way I was doing it before. So BC is congruent to EF. So now we know that these two triangles are congruent by the side 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 property, and the way we could say that, get okay, one more color here, is that triangle. And this is the symbol for triangle. So triangle ABC, sorry about that, ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And then we just say by what property? So then we could say by S, 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 and we can abbreviate these properties. I ran out of space on the side of my thing here. We can abbreviate this property using SSS like that. So we can just say by SSS. Or you would say side, side, side. Okay, so that's the side, side, side property. And we're going to be doing some of these uh, on the, uh, from the worksheets. Okay. All right, let's do a look at the next one real quick. The next one is the side angle side congruence property also called SAS. Okay, and this one says of all two angles, uh, if, uh, sorry, I should say if two sides, let me uh, fix that one second. 
Okay, if two sides of an and an included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and an included angle of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So what is this idea of an included angle? Okay, included angle. All that means is it's like sandwiched. So in other words, you can see right here angle H, this angle right here that I just highlighted is actually sandwiched between side GH and HI and same thing in the other triangle the uh, angle is sandwiched between those, between those same two sides. So this is the side angle side property. And how are we going to write this out? Well, let's do this one too. Okay, so we can say that segment GH is congruent to segment JK. And then we can say that our angle H is congruent to angle K. It's very important on the, on the picture that you make sure that this angle is uh, in between the two sides that you're talking about. Because if this angle, for example, was over here, then we have a different property that we can't use. And I'll tell you about that later. Okay, so if that angle was over there where, the, where it highlighted blue, uh, this doesn't work. Okay, and the last one is segment IH is congruent to segment LK. Alright, that's side angle side. Let's do the next one. Oh wait, let me uh, write the congruence property. So then we can say triangle uh, GHI is congruent to triangle JKL by Side angle side. Good. And okay, let's do the next one. The next one is angle side angle. Okay, so you can read the definition here. So basically, this one is if uh, two angles and an included side of one triangle are congruent to the two angles and included side of a second, then they're congruent. So that's this picture here. You'll see that our angles now are on either side of this segment here. Okay, so this is what you're looking for is see the angles now are sandwiching the segment where the previous one, the segments were sandwiching an angle. So uh, this would ensure that these two triangles are congruent. So let's go ahead and write this one out. We can say that angle N is congruent to angle Q. And we can say that segment um, NO is congruent to segment QR and we can say angle O is congruent to angle R. Now these take some practice to get like oh, which one's the angle, which one's the segment um, to be able to do these quickly so we're going to practice these quite a bit um, so you feel comfortable. Okay. And then lastly we need to write out our statement about these two triangles. So I'm going to use white on this one. So I can say the triangle M N O is congruent to triangle PQR by angle sine angle. And the interesting thing about angle side angle is that you can actually use them out of order. Okay, the previous one we couldn't. Side angle side has to be in that order, but angle side angle, you could change the order. Let me show you why. These are the same two triangles, and you'll notice that I moved the congruent angle. Okay, so you'll notice that now the congruent angle is this one there. Okay. But we know that by our triangle sum theorem, that if we have this one's the same as this one, and this one's the same as this one, Right, we can actually ca calculate the third one, right? So let's say this one was, uh, I don't know, uh, 30 degrees, right? And this one was like uh, 80 degrees, something. These don't really make sense based on what they look like, but uh, that's the idea. Uh, this one's like 80 degrees, right? We we could find this one, okay? And that would be exactly the same as this triangle here. If that was 30 degrees, this looks like 300, huh? If this was uh, 30 degrees and, and this was 80 degrees, we could find this one. So both of these 
both of these two are actually going to be the same, that one and that one. Okay, so that's why we can also use uh, side angle angle. We can use that too. Okay, uh, let's do one last one, and then we'll talk about ones that don't work. Okay, the last one is the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence property. We can abbreviate this one HL, <clears throat> and this one is for uh, right triangles only. So make a note of that. Uh, make sure you, that you that you know that this is for right triangles only. Okay. Uh, so if the hypotenuse and one leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second, then the triangles are congruent. So on this one here, all we have to say is that uh, triangle. Um, we can say that angle T and angle W are both. 90 degrees. Should have used yellow for that, but that's okay. We'll just highlight it yellow. Okay. So angle T and angle W are both 90 degrees. Okay. Then we can say, uh, talk about our two segments or our two hy hypotenuses, or I think it's hypotenuse actually, but it's kind of weird. So the hypotenuse of this one, so SU is congruent to the hypotenuse of the other one, so VX. And then we can say that uh, the leg TU is congruent to the other leg WX. Okay. So then these are then congruent by uh, hypotenuse legs. So triangle STU is congruent to triangle VWX by hypotenuse. Oops. Get all messed up. Hypotenuse leg. Okay, so those are our uh, triangle congruence properties. Let me show you the ones that don't work and kind of show you why too. Okay, ones that don't work. Angle, angle, angle. Okay. Angle, angle, angle does not work because look, I actually made two triangles that have congruent angles, so this angle's actually the same as that one, and this one, and this one, and so on. And that one's the same as that one. But look, they're totally different sizes. One is much smaller, and one is much larger. Okay, they're actually the same shape, but they're not congruent. They're not the same size. So this is, they're the same shape, but they're not the same size. And then this is the one you definitely can't use. Uh, oh, so I said no cars on that one because it's AAA, right? Like the insurance company does cars. This one de definitely doesn't work is ASS. Okay, we all know what that says. Don't say it. Okay, here's why because I actually did one with ASS. So this angle is congruent to this one, and this side is congruent to this side, and this length here is actually the same length as that. But you can see that the triangles are definitely not the same shape at all. This one's an obtuse triangle here. This one's an acute triangle. So there's no buts. Absolutely no buts. You can't say this word in class. Don't say it either. And SSA is just ass backwards. So you can't say that one either. Okay. So these are your triangle congruence properties. And we're going to be practicing these quite a bit so you can get the hang of it.